Hello, everyone, and welcome to Vachery to Louisiana on the campus of St. James High School. My name is Aaron Ortigo. I'm here with Chris Hunter, and you are watching High School Baseball and KWBJ Live. We're here where the St. St. James Wildcats are hosting the Berwick High Panthers in uh, their first district game of the year for both teams. Aaron, the Panthers come into this game with a 5-14 and 14 record. Interesting situation. Yesterday when we talked about this game as, a, as an upcoming event, Berwick was ranked 22nd in the Division Three non-select power ratings. Today they've moved up to 20th without playing a game. Indicative of their schedule strength, they, uh, they picked up a few wins and picked up a couple of power rankings without having to play. We'll go into that a little more as we continue. First pitch misses. It's a ball. That's... On the mound for the Wildcats is uh, Landon Gravois. His battery mate is Andre Mailer, and at the plate is the left fielder, Eli Lodrig, leading off for the Panthers. On deck is center fielder, Zach Kitchen. Two balls and a strike. Lodrig lead off hitter for the Panthers. Beautiful afternoon here, nothing but blue skies and sun. A little soft liner, it's going to drop in front of the center fielder. He'll catch it on the one hop, and Lodrig will be safe at first base with a single. That, that'll bring to the plate the uh, center fielder, Zach Kitchen. On deck is first baseman Jason Matthews. Aaron, I believe Grabois is the same pitcher we saw against Patterson last week. He is. I just checked, went back and looked. He pitched a beauty, a shutout against the uh, Lumberjacks a, a week or so. I think it was a week ago Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. That was his first win of the year. He's got a 1-4 and four record. Well, he pitched a beauty then. He falls behind Kitchen. 1-0. This is Grabois' sixth appearance of the year. All starts. One and four record, as we said, ERA of 6.87 on the year. This pitch misses low and away ball. Two, two and oh to count. Nobody out with a runner on first base. Actually, Chris, we have the exact same starting lineup for St. James uh, this week as they had last week. Every position and then each spot in the batting order. Gravois goes the first, and Lodrig back in time. Two balls and a strike. This is popped up, straight back, out of play, behind home plate, actually behind the press box. Two balls, two strikes. St. James is 9 and 10 on the season. As you mentioned, this is also their district opener. They are ranked 17th in the power rankings. So 17 versus 20 today. Both teams jockeying for playoff position. Well, like we said last night, we thought we had two pretty evenly matched teams coming up here to today. So uh, we're expecting a very competitive baseball game. And Kinchin bats with a full count. This is popped up in left center field. Center fielder calls for it as Kozna makes the catch for the first out. Our starting lineup uh, for the Panthers is uh, Eli Lodry, who's on base as the left fielder. Zach Kitchen is the uh, center fielder. Gavin Darby, who's now hitting, he is the DH. Ground ball to third. Makes the catch, goes to first a little bit low, but dug out over there by Mailer, Marler, rather. So two outs brings to the plate first baseman Jason Matthews. He'll be followed by today's pitcher Henry Ferguson. Carter Whipple is in right field. 
Evan Crapel is at second base. Lane Rogers is your catcher. Grant White is your shortstop. Your third baseman is Rhett Ratcliffe. <laughs> Lodrig was does go to second base on the ground out by ki uh, Kitchen, or rather uh, Darby, excuse me. This pitch is low for a ball, ball two, two and zero. Oh. Jason Matthews at the plate. He is the Panther first baseman. Swing and a miss. Strike one, two balls and a strike. Dar uh, Matthews, rather, is the cleanup hitter. This uh, ground ball foul towards the Wildcat dugout, which is in the third base dugout. Panthers are in the first base dugout. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and one on. Runner is going, but he's going to have to go back because uh, Matthews gets hit by the pitch. So that'll put runners on first and second base with two outs, and that'll bring to the plate the pitcher. Henry Thurgerson. His pitch catches the outside corner for a call. Strike one. Thurgerson Nothing. hitting just 186 on the season, but he's got one of Berwick's two home runs on the year. He bats in the five hole. This is popped up on the right side. Right fielder drifting back, gets under it, and makes the catch for the third out. And that's a Landry out there in right field making the catch. So the leadoff hit and a hit batter. They don't get past second base. And Landon Gravois does a good job on the mound like for the Wildcats. In the middle of the first inning, nothing for the Panthers and the Wildcats coming to bat. The starters for the Wildcats, their uh, leadoff hitter is the third baseman, Cade Becknell, followed by the center fielder, Liam Kasna, and then the catcher, Andre Mahler, followed by the cleanup hitter and pitcher, Landon Gravois. Left fielder, Cam LeBlanc, bats fifth. First baseman, Andon Mahler, followed by the right fielder, Noah Landry. The DH is Dakota Benoit. Shortstop is Braden Ciano. And the second baseman, Brandon Rome. Henry Thorgerson on the mound for Berwick. This is his seventh mound appearance of the year. His sixth start, whoops. Yeah. Slip in the warm-ups, now's the time to do it. Yeah, if you're going to do that, this is when you want to do You certainly don't want to do that with anybody on third base. But, yeah. Thorgerson has a record of 1-2 and two and an ERA of 3.74. Not bad. Not a bad ERA. Nope. That's what I'm saying. With Thorgerson on the mound, as you said, and his battery mate is Elaine Rogers. Chris, both of these players, both of these teams rather coming here today, uh, their records may not be impressive, but both teams very, very young. Uh, Berwick, like I said, last year they won the state championship, but everybody was a senior. Yeah, Berwick but, with a very rough schedule this right. year, Coach Lud, Lud Henry, assistant coach Lud Henry, I was speaking to him a little earlier today, and he feels like the record is really not indicative of how well the team has played. They have really played some tough competition. Uh, for example, their last game, they lost to Opelousas Catholic, who is only a 1A team, but they are ranked number one in the state in Division IV non-select right now. And they played a lot of close games in those losses. So it feels like potentially this is a strong team. They can make some noise in the playoffs. 
Yeah, close games, especially recently, uh, Chris. Like they, they, they played Assumption last week, 4A school, and a good one lost by two runs. So, um, like I said, they, they, their record's not impressive, but they've played some close games, and, and they playing with a lot. And you notice, too, the record early in the season, a lot worse than it is later in the season, which is very indicative of, of young and inexperienced players. Yeah, the games have gotten a lot closer as we've gone on in the season. One ball, one strike. Beck now. It's the ground ball between short and third. It's going to be a single. Rounds first base, but stays there. Nobody out. Becknell on first base. Center fielder Liam Kosnov comes to the plate. On deck is the catcher, Andre Mahler. Squares the bunt. Ferguson picks it up, goes to first, gets the out there. So it's a sacrifice bunt for Kosnov. One away, one to three, and successfully, Cade Becknell moves to second base, and like I always like to point out, that's the best baseball play in baseball. Everybody's, Lumpires love it because everybody's happy. Defense gets it out, offense moves their runner over, everybody's happy. Doesn't happen often. At the plate, catcher and third uh, hitter is Andre Mahler. He looks at a breaking ball for a call, strike one. Mahler hitting 380. He has St. James' only home run of the season and is their RBI leader with 20. This pitch misses up and away. That evens the count at a ball and a strike. One one pitch. Ferguson checks the runner, delivers, dismisses again up and away for a ball two. Two balls and a strike. Softball field here at St. James is directly behind us. Berwick playing St. James in softball right now as well. St. James leading one to nothing. This is popped up to right field. Right fielder running hard, trying to catch up to it. It's going to get over his head. They're going to send one runner home. And the throw comes home, but sliding ahead of the throw is Becknell. And he scores the first run of the ball game. Mahler goes into second base with the double. And the Wildcats have two hits here early. Two hits in a sacrifice bunt that brings to the plate cleanup hitter and pitcher Landon Gravois. His pitch up and in inside. Yeah, Mala gave that ball a pretty good ride. Whipple did a pretty good job, or a real good job in right field catching up with it on only one hop and a good relay, relay in just too far away to get the runner coming in from second. One old pitch to Gravois. Again, misses inside. Ball two. One out, one in, and one on. His pitch misses. Ball three, three and oh. Looks like he's trying to stay away from him. All, all these three balls, every one of them was outside. Even the strike was uh, low and away. Breaking ball. There's a fastball that catches the outside corner. Runs the count full. All right, I'm sorry, that's the first pitch. So, oh, I had it right, yep. Three and one. Three and one, okay, yep. Oh, scoreboard says three and two. 
I was yeah. thinking his first pitch was a call strike curveball, but nope, they changed. that was a previous hitter maybe. Now it's 3-2 for sure. It's a foul ball. Bradwell's hitting 370 with 14 RBI. So yeah, not a guy you want to grease one down the middle to. Nope. And he's the reason why he's batting clean up. Oh, yeah. And this will be right at the center fielder. It was a line drive, but right at the center fielder ki kitchen out there. He makes the catch for the second out. Two outs and runner on second base. The five-hole hitter and left fielder, Cam LeBlanc, comes to the plate. Ferguson gets his sign, checks the runner, delivers. Breaking ball calls strike one. LeBlanc chases the curveball and misses it. Nothing in two to count on LeBlanc. Two outs with a runner on base. We're in the bottom of the first in Vashery, Louisiana. Wildcats lead 1-0. Had to stay with it because he's got those two strikes, but uh, that breaks away, low and away. Ball one, one ball, two strikes. Thorgerson tried to get him to chase one. Good job laying off by LeBlanc. Yeah, and that was a good pitch on an 0-2 count. Broke out of the strike zone. His fastball that misses up and away. All right, well, now you got to come back and challenge him. Yep, 2-2. Two -two. You want him to swing at this pitch. You don't want a full count. And this is low on the outside part of the plate, but a little bit low. Runs the count full. We got a full count with two outs. Runner in scoring position on second base. That's Mahler. He knocked in the only run of the game so far. He doubled to right field. Yeah. And this curveball misses. So he'll get the walk. LeBlanc draws the walk. This will put runners on first and second base. And how often it, it seems like you see with a full count, pitchers come in with that high pitch up around the letters and try to get them to chase. Mm -hmm. This time he tried to give him to chase a, a breaking ball and he laid off of it. It was close. I had to wait for the umpire's call to say what he was going to be. This fastball misses outside. Uh, it's, a, it's a run that potentially doesn't hurt you because it just gives you a force all around. You threw a few more pitches, but you can get out of this, still get out of this safely. Right. Andre Mahler stands on second base and his little brother, an eighth grader, he's batting right now. He's also the first baseman. He gets ahead 2-0. This is fouled out of the play behind the first base dugout. Two balls in a strike. And Chris Mullers also have another brother that's playing some college ball. I believe at Southeastern. Oh, he's here. He's actually here in the press box with us. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. This is low and away in the dirt. It'll be a wild pitch and both runners will move over. Yeah. 
Now runners will stand on second and third. Two outs, three balls and one strike is the count. I have on some baller. I have some breaking news regarding local college athletes to share with you at a little more appropriate time later in the show. Well, good. Ground ball to third, makes the catch, throws the first. Had the scoop and he short hopped it, but good job over there by Matthews to get the third out. Nice dig by the first baseman. Nice dig, nice stretch too. He had to reach out down the first base line and uh, he's got a runner coming at him as fast as he can run. So, but anyway, after one complete inning of play, the Wildcats take a 1-0 lead over the Panthers. And let's take a moment to thank a few of our sponsors. Lapco Manufacturing. Feel safe, work smart, look good with Lapco FR, www.lapco.com. Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista. Open late night, delivery through DoorDash. Bayou Bend Fitness Center, 1209 Northwest Boulevard in Franklin. A healthier you begins at Bayou Bend. Conrad Industries, serving St. Mary Parish in the marine industry since 1948. Conrad wishes all of our local teams good luck. And Core Physical Therapy and Sports Performance, here to restore the quality of life you deserve, 611 Brasher Avenue in Morgan City. Aaron, we come to all these ballparks and we get to try a lot of concession stand hamburgers. <laughs> and uh, mostly they're pretty good. But tonight, we got some pasta laia mm -hmm. in the St. James concession stand. And, you know, sometimes you just got to go, mm, mm, mm. Yeah. That good was stuff. good. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing like good food. And I can tell if it's good for me by whether I like it or not. <laughs> if I like it, I guarantee you it's not good for me. And if it's good for me, uh, chances are real good. I don't care for it. But anyway, we're in the top of the second inning. one nothing. Wildcats lead. <laughs> Coming to the plate is the right fielder, Carter Whipple. On deck is Evan Crapel, the second baseman. You don't talk about concession stand food and nutritional value in the same sentence. Yeah. <laughs> you don't come here to eat healthy to any ballpark. Whipple is the six-hole hitter. After Crapel will be the catcher, Lane Rogers. He's in the hole. This is popped up to right field. Right fielder drifting back. Now he's got to turn and run hard, and this is going to get over him. It's going to take second. Now he's heading towards third, and he's going to slide at third without a throw. But Carter or Whipple. The right fielder for the Panthers starts off the top of the second inning with a triple. Oh, a right fielder completely misread that ball, and it could be the wind somewhat. I don't see flags anywhere, but it feels like the wind is blowing out towards right field, and it might have blew it back over his shoulder a little bit. But another thing, too, even now we're sitting in a press box, but it, it, when that came off his bat, I didn't think he was going to go that far. Yeah, I thought that was a routine fly ball. Yeah, and I think he thought the same thing, and then he realized, no, this got more carry than I originally thought, so it didn't just fool him. At the plate is the second baseman, Evan Crapel. He's got a 2-0 count. Whipple is the tying run, standing on third base with no outs. A breaking ball that misses off the plate, 2 0. Crabell's hitting 205 on the season. Eight hits, all singles. Yep. Is a fast ball up in the strike zone, but in the strike zone for a call. Strike one, three balls in a strike. A single with play here. And this pitch misses, ball four. So there will be runners on the corners with no outs. And that'll bring to the plate the catcher, Lane Rogers. Rogers bats in the eight hole. Up? 
Rogers hitting 190. Berwick as a team just hitting 224. So not a lot of strength in the lower part of the lineup. Gets the bunt down and it's gonna be touched in, in fair territory. That may have rolled out if he uh, left it there, but uh, he touched it in fair territory. So it is a fair ball and everybody is safe. Yeah, you kind of chalk that up as a mental error. I don't know, Chris, you're thinking sacrifice, but safe, and then uh, always give him a hit on that. Ah. Uh, that was the pitch. Well, I, I, can you, do you give him a sacrifice even if he's safe? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you I wouldn't mean, give him a hit. You mean it would have been a fielder's choice. But, uh, you know, because it looked like he wanted to come home with that. I go with the fielder's choice then. Yeah. I hesitate to call that an error because I don't think he was getting anybody. Well, then we can just go ahead and give him the hit. Okay. Bases are loaded with nobody out at the plate is the nine-hole hitter and shortstop, Grant White. This pitch misses. Two balls and one strike. Nowhere to put him. And I apologize. I watched the, the ball on the bunt and assumed that the run came in and scored. I have taken that off the scoreboard now. And it shows bases loaded. Three balls and a strike. On deck is the leadoff hitter, Eli Lodry. His fastball right down the middle of the plate, taken for strike two and a full count. Full count with the bases loaded and no outs. This is popped up straight back behind the press box and out of play. Berwick Lady Panthers have pulled into a 1-1 tie with St. James in the top of the fourth inning behind us. This tie protecting the plate and he grounds that foul towards the third base dugout. Count will stay full. Another one of those full count first pitch foul ball. This is a ground ball right down the third base line. It's going to be a fair ball. One run will score. Second run is sent in. And the runners will stop at second and third, but two runs score. So White, the nine-hole hitter, comes in with the double. Clutch piece of hitting by White there, just walking that ball down the third base line. Yeah, it, and it was it bounced just inside fair turret, actually bounced over the third base bag and uh, took off to the outfield from there. This is popped up. This is going to be on the infield. And staying with it is the first baseman, Mahler, makes the catch for the first out. So with one away in runners on second and third, Zach Kitchen comes to the plate. He flied out to center field in the first inning. And the pitch went behind him, huh? Yeah, that was behind him. Did it him. hit him? No, it was no? behind him. It didn't hit him at all? Not at all. Okay, ball one. Kitchen batting 224 on the year, chance to add to his 11 RBI count. This pitch is uh, outside for a ball two, two and oh to count. And a miss for a ball three.
and misses outside for ball four. So Kitchen, Kitchen draws the walk to load the bases. Hey, Coach so, Lou Gilliatt's going to come out and talk, talk about this one with his team. Never saw a ground walk get in trouble last week against Patterson. Nope. It's the first time he struggled. Well, he gave up three hits to the uh, bottom of the batting order. He had a walk and three hits to score those two runs. But uh, they had a fly ball on the infield. And then another walk. So two walks and three hits. And for St. James with the bases loaded, here comes the batter you want to see the least in the Berwick lineup, Grant Darby, hitting 320 on the season. A couple of doubles, 11 RBI. Darby is the DH, batting in the three hole. On deck is your cleanup hitter, Jason Matthews. 10 RBI, excuse me. Chase is a breaking ball. It's a foul tip. Strike one. The old one pitch catches the inside corner for a call. Strike two. Nothing in two. Darby grounded out to third base in the first inning for the second out. This is his second at bat. He goes after one, low and away, stays alive, fouls it back straight into the net. Count stays, nothing in two. Bases are loaded. One away. Again, fouls it straight back. Infielders are playing up on the grass on the corners, playing straight away in the middle. Darby hanging in there. Strikeouts have been a big problem for Berwick this year. 140 as a team, six different players with 10 or more strikeouts. Darby has eight. Swing and a miss for strike three. So Darby goes down swinging for the second out of the inning. That'll bring to the plate the cleanup hitter who's actually batting eighth this, this inning, this half inning, Jason Matthews. Matthews was hit with a pitch his last time up. Chases a breaking ball for strike one. Matthews hitting 212 with a couple of doubles on the season. He has a breaking ball for a call, strike two, nothing in two. So since the visit to the mound, he seems to have found that strike zone. And as I say that, he misses wide outside. Well, he might have been wasting one there with 0 and 2. May not have meant to go that far outside, but you're certainly yeah. not going to yeah. give him anything hittable on an 0 2 count. And this hit to left field, but right at the left fielder for the third out. So Matthews flies out to left for the three away, but three hits and two runs are picked up by the Panthers. A great job minimizing the damage by Gravois yep. after loading the bases. Well, you know, he had the bases loaded twice and he had to face the top of the batting order after the bottom of the batting order gets yeah. on base. But, uh, yeah, the first one didn't go so well. Right, but, but he, he shut down the top of the batting order. The first four hitters were, the, were three of those were the outs and one was a walk. Thank everybody for joining us here on the KWBJ Live YouTube channel today. Please hit the like button while you're here. Don't forget to subscribe for all of our great live content from KWBJ. After this one, 
We go to Hanson next Thursday for a big district contest between the Hanson Tigers and the Central Catholic Eagles. First pitch on that game scheduled for six o'clock. Right now, Central is ranked sixth in Division Four. Select Hanson 14th. So that's going to be a big, big game for both those teams fighting for playoff position. That is six o'clock next Thursday. Well, we move to the bottom of the second inning. Panthers on top, two to one over the Wildcats. The Wildcats will start out with their seven hole hitter and right fielder, Noah Landry, be followed by the DH, Dakota Benoit, and then shortstop, Braden Ciano. St. James does have a player loosening up in the bullpen. Not sure, I can't quite make out the number. I believe it is number 10, Dakota Benoit. Well, it shouldn't be because Dakota's on deck. Or he's scheduled to hit after Noah Landry. Okay, well then that's <laughs> not number 10 I see out there. Yeah. No, I can't, yeah, that is 10 on the on deck circle. And he's not pitched any this year, so well, yeah. that rules that out. This pitch upstairs, ball one, two strikes. Noel Landry with his first at bat of the game. And he chases that one for a strike three. With one away, the DH, Dakota Benoit, comes to the plate. Benoit squares to bunt, but pulls it back. It's a ball, ball one, misses outside. Henry Thurgerson stays on the mound for the Panthers. This pitch misses up high. Ball two, two and oh. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Two balls and a strike. So we're going to miss for strike two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. And bases are empty. On deck is the shortstop, Braden C, you know. And breaking ball for call, strike three. So after a couple of strikeouts, the nine hole hitter, shortstop, Braden. CNO comes to the plate. Then we are after him on deck. We'll move to the top of the batting order if CNO can get on base. First pitch misses upstairs. Ball one. This pitch, fastball on the inside part of the plate. Strike one. One ball, one strike, two outs. This is a soft liner, but over the third baseman's head, and CNO gets the single. So he'll stand at first base, and we'll move to the top of the batting order. And it'll be the third baseman, Cade Becknell. Becknell singled and scored the first run of the game in the top of the first inning. He's the leadoff hitter. Fastball catches the outside corner. Strike one. Nothing in one. Two outs and a runner on first base. Oh, 
This pitch is up and away. Rogers goes down the second, but C and O back in time. One ball, one strike. This is up and away for ball two. St. James softball now leading Berwick three to one through four innings of play. A game going on right behind us. Ferguson makes a move towards first. So you know back easily. Swing and a miss. Again, Thurgerson, I'm not Thurgerson, but Rogers goes down to first base. Trying to keep CNO close. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. This is a line drive to the left fielder, but right at the left fielder, Lodri for the third out. So one hit, but no runs for the Wildcats. Good inning for Thurgason. Yeah. You know, a uh, good thing about it too, Chris, he got behind several of the hitters, but then came back and, and got them all to, to swing at the ball or strike out one or the other because he did pick up a couple of strikeouts, but he gave up a hit, but no runs. So after two complete innings of play, we've got a score of Panthers two and Wildcats one. And let's thank a few of our sponsors, Patterson State Bank, free checking, great rates, low down payment, home loan options, and the best in mobile banking, PSB, quality community banking since 1925. GJCurbside.com, your complete online grocery store, including local and regional products. Check our website for delivery options. From our curb to yours, GJ Curbside. Oshner St. Mary, quality health care close to home. Lafayette Electric, 1207 Greenwood Street in Morgan City, proud supporter of high school baseball in the Tri-City area. And Allen's Communications, locally owned TV, cable, internet, and telephone service. Call 384-8335. Okay, we're going to move to the top of the third. And the Panthers will start that out with the five-hole hitter and pitcher, Henry Thurgerson. He'll be followed by the right fielder, Carter Whipple, and the second baseman, Evan Crapel. Thurgerson flied out to right field in the first inning. And that misses inside for ball one. This has popped up to center field. Center fielder going back, going back. This is going to get over his head. He stumbles as he rounds first base. He's going to go in standing up, and he may have hurt himself. Chris, he, uh, he stumbled as he rounded first base. So Thurgerson doubles. Now he can have a courtesy yeah, runner. Pitchers get courtesy runners. So they're going to send him to the dugout. Did, did he sure. go all the way to the ground? I was following no, the ball. No, I don't think so. No, he stumbled and he kind of put his hand down. He didn't go on the ground because it looked like he kept his his hand kept him up. And uh, and then once he came up, he just kind of jogged over to second base. Uh, he wasn't running hard after that, so. Well, maybe at that point he, he knew he had second and that was it. Let's hope that was the case. We don't want injuries. This soft liner just over the shortstop's head. Here comes the runner. They're going to send him home. This gets behind the left fielder. And one run does score as Whipple has a single. 
Landon Gravois is still on the mound for the Wildcats. Panthers go up three to two, or rather three to one, I'm sorry. Single and an error. Right. Definitely might have had a chance to make a play at home had that ball been fielded cleanly. Well, it looked like Coach Artigo was sending him home all the way over there at third base. First pitch is a strike at the plate is Crapel. Uh, Evan Crapel, second baseman. Tries to get the bunt down. It's foul. Crapel walked and scored a run in the second inning. Whipple, who stands on second base has a single and a triple in this game so far. He, he tripled uh, in the second inning and scored and uh, just picked up an RBI single. Swing and a miss for strike three. And the first out here in the third inning. That'll send to the plate the catcher, Lane Rogers. Rogers singled in the second inning. Here's a breaking ball, but he's under a little bit, fouls it straight back into the net. He bats with one out and one on. Crapel or rather uh, Whipple stands on second base. Fast ball misses outside for a ball. You said Whipple's two for two? Uh, yeah, he had a triple to start off the, uh, the second inning. And then the single right here. There's a ground ball right at the shortstop. Whipple's going to go to third. And Rogers will be out. Good throw by shortstop Cino. So with two outs and a runner on third base, the six-hole hitter who doubled his last time up is shortstop Grant White. He'll bat with two outs and a runner on third base. Whipple came into the game batting 257, but if my trusty phone calculator is correct, he now has a 297 average. Yeah, a two for two day will do that. This pitch misses outside, ball two. White is the nine hole hitter. This ground ball hit hard, but foul down the third base line. <laughs> two balls and a strike, two outs, one <coughs> on third. Ground ball down the third base line, but foul. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Again, ground ball down to third base. Count will stay, two and two. This pitch stays up high for a ball four and a full count. Full count with two outs. Fielders everywhere playing straight away. This pitch misses low and away for ball four. So White will draw the walk. That'll leave runners on first and third and we'll move to the top of the batting order. 
That is a nice at bat for White. Yep. At that uh, top of the batting order is the left fielder, Eli Lodrig. Lodrig is uh, one for two. Uh, he singled to start the game off, got left on base, and then he uh, popped up to the third baseman in the second inning. So we're in the third inning, and he's batting for the third time. This is a ground ball, hit it right up the middle. Shortstop makes the catch behind second base, makes the throw in time. This might have gotten through if it doesn't hit the mound first uh, because it does slow it down some, but in either case, nice play over there uh, at Sharp by C&O because he had to catch that, actually caught it behind second base. Had to throw kind of an awkward throw because his momentum is taking him in the right field. But he makes a strong throw and gets the out. Middle of the third inning. Panthers picked up uh, one run on two base hits. They lead over the Wildcats, three to one. Last time Berwick was here at St. James, their pitcher was Hayden Robinson. Robinson is now enjoying his first spring in the Milwaukee Brewers professional organization. And we're told uh, as, as spring training has been breaking up, in fact, today was opening day in the majors. Uh, Robinson was almost, they it looked like they were all set to assign him to their low A team in North Carolina. But at the last minute, uh, they decided to keep him uh, with the, uh, the rookie team in, in Arizona. However, we're told they, they, they feel that of their, their high school pitching prospects, Robinson's the furthest along, most, most ready to advance from rookie to class, to, to class A. Well, that means he's got a bright future in front of him. Let's hope it works out well for him. He said they like, he's, he's got three pitches that he can throw for strikes. That's, that's pretty good for a, yep. for a, for a, minor, a, a minor league or just not a high school. Yep. Played in rookie league. Um, this is uh, Liam Kasna at the plate. He's a two-hole hitter. He's leading off the bottom of the third for the Wildcats, and uh, he's looking at a 2-0 count right now. On deck is the catcher, Andre Mahler. He's followed by the pitcher, Landon Gravois. 3-0 is the count on Cosna. Takes this one, squares the butt, but he wasn't butting. He was uh, trying to distract the pitcher, but the curveball comes in for the strike. Three balls and a strike. This is the ground ball towards second. Flipping to the pitcher, Thurgerson covering the bag. Gets the out. One away. Coming up for the Wildcats is the three-hole hitter and catcher, Andre Mahler. Mahler uh, hit a double back in the first inning. I like the, the infield communication right there. Thurgerson heading for first base to cover automatically on a ball to the right side. Uh, Ratcliffe charging, makes the play at second. But Matthews seeing Thorgerson coming in, Matthews at first base, seeing Thorgerson coming in with a head of steam, gets out of his way and lets him handle the play, even though it would have been very easy for Matthews just stand in there and make the play himself. Yeah. Well, it, it kind of, I think they both went for the ball because it was between them. There was a slow roller between uh, the first baseman and the second baseman. And uh, Crapel charging hard, makes a good catch. And as you said, Thurgerson, who's moving as soon as the ball was hit, which is what he's supposed to do, is a good job there. And uh, he catches the flip on the run, just like you draw it up. Three balls in a strike to Mahler. Mahler. 
Marler draws a walk. So he will go to first base with one away. And the cleanup hitter, Landon Gravois. Gravois hit a line drive, but he hit it right at the center fielder in the first inning. Fastball misses outside. One and zero to count. One out and one on. Fastball misses outside. Rogers throws down the first base. Back in time is Mahler. I guess it's still Mahler out there. He's a catcher. He he could have a base runner. That looks like Mahler. I think that's still him out there. I just got confirmation that it is he. Gets to show off that catcher speed. Is, is that a thing, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> But they have confidence in him because he's still out there where you could have had a courtesy runner. And Gravois draws a walk. So back-to-back -back walks. Puts runners on first and second base with one away. And now Coach eight Artigo. of Thorgerson's last nine pitches have been balls. Right. And now we go back to that, that base hit when he, he, he slipped and had to put a hand down. Yeah. Coming around first base, and you wonder, maybe did he? I didn't see whether it was left hand or right hand, but maybe did he hurt something? have to wonder. It could be. I, I noticed when he was running to cover the base a couple batters ago, he um, looked like he ran over there without an issue with his legs. But then again, like you said, it could, it could be a hand thing. I can't tell you for a fact, Chris, but I believe it was his left hand that went down because of the way, you know, you're leaning inside because he was rounding second base. He may have even tripped over the base. I'm not certain. I mean, a second base, rounding first base when he tripped. And, well, he's uh, a right-hander, so if, that, if that's the case, that, that no, it should be, be affecting him. It would be his left hand because he was leaning inside is what I'm saying. That's what it looked like. Because like I said, I didn't see him go down. I just saw him kind of stumble and coming back up. Never hit the ground. This is a call strike. Gets away from Rogers, but not far enough for the runners to advance. Nothing in one. This pitch misses low and away for a ball. One ball, one strike. At the plate is left fielder Cam LeBlanc. He drew a walk his last time up. Fast ball misses low and away. Two balls, one strike. This pitch high and tight. Runs the count three and one. Ground ball to second base. He bobbles it, and everybody will be safe. I think over at second base, he was thinking double play all the way, and it was a double play ball, but he didn't field it cleanly. Yeah, it would have been a routine play at second. And yeah, might have, might have got a little ahead of himself there. That will load the bases with one away, and that'll bring to the plate first baseman, Andin Mahler. He grounded to third his last time up. Bases loaded with one away. This pitch misses inside. <coughs> Ma
Mahler hitting 310 coming into this game. Has three doubles on the year. Ground ball to third. He's going to come home. Got the force there. Going to go to first. Not in time. In fact, this ball is going to get past the first baseman and a run is going to score. Another run is going to go to third. Mahler trots down to second base and one run scores. So Mahler is on with the fielder's choice. Ends up on second base. And, and a, a disappointing development there for Berwick because they, they knew they had a slow runner coming out of, out of the batter's box and a good chance for a uh, double play. And the throw just rushed a little bit and thrown a little too far up the line. So two away with runners on second and third. First pitch was a strike. Second pitch is a strike. Noel Landry at the plate. He's the right fielder. He struck out his last time up. Nothing in two. The count here. This pitch misses outside. Ball one, one ball, two strikes. Two outs, two runners on base. This popped up, short left field. Didn't make the catch, he short hopped it. Nice effort out there by Lodrig. But it's a single for Landry and another run scores. That ties the ball game up at three apiece. And it brings to the plate the DH, Dakota Benoit. He uh, struck out looking back in the second inning. Runner on third and on first with two outs. Ground ball back to the pitcher, bobbles it, but recovers in time, throws the first, gets the out, and the Wildcats pick up two runs on one hit. And we've got a tie ball game after three complete innings of play. Panthers three, Wildcats three. Aaron, I mentioned some breaking news regarding local college athletes today. Earlier in the week, we posted that two former Central Catholic girls bowlers will be in the NCAA National Championship Tournament this year as their teams advanced. Emily Price with Alabama State and Jolie Boudreaux with <coughs> Belmont Abbey College over in North Carolina. NCAA released the tournament brackets today, and in the first round, it will be Alabama State versus Belmont Abbey College. Wow. So two <laughs> former Central Catholic bowlers will be going head-to-head, -head yeah. looking for a spot in the national championship. Well, Chris, do you know if these people get scholarships like other athletes at school, especially in a small school? Uh, I am not sure. I'm pretty sure both of them... Uh, have some academic scholarships with them. Oh. Alabama State probably does some partial scholarships in bowling. Yeah. Certainly, I don't think anybody does full full scholarships for for a, a sport like bowling. But I would bet they probably get some get a some help, help. Some help. Yeah. Okay. In top of the fourth, 
Leading off top of the fourth will be the two-hole hitter and center fielder, Zach Kitchen. Kitchen is uh, 0 for 1 today. Flied out to center field and drew a walk. This pitch misses to even the count at one ball, one strike. Swing and a miss at the breaking ball. Call, I mean not call, but a swing, strike two. This is up and away for a ball. Evens the count, two balls, two strikes. This misses outside, ball three. Three balls and two strikes. This off the handle, popped up to the shortstop. He makes the catch for the first out. With one away, that'll bring to the plate the DH, Gavin Darby. Darby is 0 for 2. He grounded the third in the first and struck out in the second. This pitch is low for ball one. Darby bats in the three hole on deck is your cleanup hitter and first baseman, Jason Matthews. Tried to hold up, but the ball hit his bat, so it's a foul ball and a strike. One one, the count with one out. This pitch misses outside for ball two, two and one. The sun is starting to set as you see the shadow. That's the first base dugout, which is the Panther dugout. And uh, starting to inch across the infield. That sun will definitely start to affect the left side of the of the infield and outfield. Brown ball down the third base line, foul. That'll even account two balls, two strikes. We could use a little shadow. It is a bright day out here today. This off the handle, a little blooper. It's going to drop in front of the right fielder. So Darby with a single. A little blooper that tomorrow will look like a line drive. With one out. Yeah, one out. Runner on first base. Clean up hitter, first baseman, Jason Matthews, who's 0 for 1 today. Got hit by a pitch in the first. Flied out to left field in the second, and he's gone to second base. He oh. overslid the bag, and he is out. He got there in time, yep. but uh, he evidently overslid the bag. That's uh, Darby getting caught stealing. Yeah, Two outs now, yeah, bases. He's definitely hit. safe on the throw. Right, yeah. This popped up to right field. Right fielder drifting back, makes an over the shoulder catch for the third out. So he gave up a hit, but still faced only the minimum. So middle of the fourth inning, we've got a tie ball game with the Panthers three and the, the Wildcats three. <coughs> So in the bottom of the fourth, the Wildcats are going to start out with the nine-hole hitter, Braden Ciano, the shortstop. And then we'll move to the top of the batting order with third baseman, Cade Becknell, 
and he'll be followed by Liam Kasnov. We mentioned power rankings earlier. St. James 17th in Division Three non-select. Berwick is 20th. Looking further down, Patterson is 26th right now. It was 24, make the playoffs. So Patterson's still right there with a fighting chance. And West St. Mary not out of it either at 29th. Yeah, because there's still, we still have, what, two or three weeks left, uh, I think, in baseball. Softball will end a week before that. Right. Berwick, in fact, next week will play five games in six days. Ooh, that's going to test that uh, pitching staff. They're going to play South Terrebonne on Monday. I believe that game is, is I, I, I don't know whether that's a home or road game. But then they're going to come back on Tuesday and play Donaldsonville. Wednesday, they'll be at Catholic of New Iberia. And on, on Thursday at Patterson. And they'll take Friday off and have another game on Saturday. Yeah, that fills up a week. Leading off of the Wildcats, number one, Braden. And as you said, really, check, really test your pitching staff. Yeah. And uh, Kaznav steps in, looks at the first pitch for a call strike one. Kaznav is 0 for 1 today. He had a sacrifice bunt in the first inning, and he grounded to second base in the third. Two now. Yep. The appeal goes to the first base umpire, and he I says, "Yes, Kazanov did go around." I, I gave you Kazanov, but it's not Kazanov. Oh, it, it's sorry. Uh, my mistake. <laughs> See you know. See you know. Okay. Who has singled? He's one for one today. He singled in the uh, second inning. Got left on base. Is a breaking ball that stays up high for a ball. One ball, two strikes. This is a foul tip into the catcher's mitt for the swinging strikeout. So with one away, we'll move to the top of the batting order and leadoff hitter and third baseman, Cade Becknell. Becknell is one for two today. He singled in the first inning and scored the first run of the game. And he also hit a line drive to left field that was caught. So one for two, and he looks at the first pitch for a strike, nothing in one. Swings at this one, swing and a miss, strike two. No balls, two strikes. One out, bases are empty. We're in the bottom of the fourth in the tie ball game. This breaking ball that stays up high. Again, up high. Ball two, two balls, two strikes. Beck now now hitting 363 on the season with that hit. This miss is low and away. We've got a full count, three and two. Pitch misses outside, ball four. So Becknell draws a walk. He'll take first base with one away. And that'll bring to the plate center fielder, Liam Kosnov. Kosnov is 0 for 1 today. He had a sacrifice bunt in the first inning and he grounded to second base in the third. Pitch misses outside for a ball. Good. 
This is up for ball two. And we're going to have a timeout called as Coach Artie Gold wants to talk to Thurgerson. Brings the infield in. And so and does gonna, Coach Giot. He do brings it. his guys up, too. That's going to do it for Thurgerson. Yep. Going to have a pitching change. This is going to be the second baseman coming to the mound now. So at second base was uh, Evan Krapel. I'm sorry. It's, no, it's Grant White. Looked like he oh, pointed yeah, to the second yeah. baseman, but this is going to be Grant White. It's uh, yeah. White was the shortstop. Okay. So he will go to the mound. Check the book on Grant White. Yeah. This will be his sixth appearance of the season. He's got a one and two record and a 5.04 ERA, 8.1 innings pitched. So no starts. All of his. His appearance is coming in relief. Okay, let's see if we can figure out where everybody went. Crapell is now the shortstop. Okay. And where was he before? He was at second base. Yep. Well, that is Eli Lodry gets second now. So is he entering the game? Who's that? Lodrig. Uh, he might be. No, he was the uh, left fielder. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thorgerson has gone to the outfield. I think he was the right fielder the last time we uh, did them, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Thorgerson has gone to center field. So where did Whipple go? Uh, Kitchen is still in the left field, and Whipple's in right. I thought that's where Thorgerson went. Thorgerson's in center. Oh, he went to center. Two outs. Yep, two outs. Runner on second. And at the plate is the catcher, Andre Marlowe. The official scorebook is 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 in the press box normally. Changes get reported to the official score, but I guess that only takes, that's only important if, if you've, uh, you're changing batters. Ground ball to second base. Goes to first for the third out. Struggled a little bit, but didn't give up any runs. Did give up a walk. White comes in and gets the third out. And we will move to the fifth. So after four complete innings of play, we've got a tie ball game at three. Three for the Panthers, three for the Wildcats. We move to the top of the fifth inning and the Panthers will send to the mound Henry Thurgerson, followed by Carter Whipple and Evan Krepel. 
will be your first three hitters. Thurgerson bats in the five hole. He is one for two today. He flied out to right field, and he doubled and scored a run in the third inning. St. James softball has defeated Berwick. Last I saw, the score was seven to two. I believe that went the full seven. Unless uh, they may have gotten a run on them <laughs> and ten run ruled it, but I'm not sure. But I'm, I, I know St. James did win the game. Oh, okay. Yesterday we saw Assumption beat Morgan City. And with that win, Assumption moved up to 11th in the Division II non-select standings. So they're, I think they were maybe around fifth or sixth last season when we saw them mm -hmm. in that nice playoff run. They've worked their way up to 11th now. They also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, lost a lot from last year. So. Yes. When you, Morgan uh, City is in 27th, yeah. so still not out of playoff contention. First pitch to Thurgerson is called strike one, breaking ball. That drew the ire of Berwick Panther fans. Check swing, foul ball, strike two. Grabois stays on the mound for the Wildcats. This pitch misses for a ball, ball one, strike two. Henry Thurgerson leading off the top of the fifth. This pitch misses, evens the count at two balls, two strikes. Ooh, this one must have slipped. This was way high. Runs the count full, three balls, two strikes. This pitch misses high and inside for ball four. So Thurgerson will lead off the top of the fifth with a walk. And that'll bring to the plate Carter Whipple. And now Coach Guillot was to come out, talk to his pitcher and infielders. And then there will be a pitching change. It's one of the outfielders comes in and swaps gloves, receives the ball from Coach Guillot. So Gravois looks like he's going to stay in the game. The new pitcher will be Liam Kozanov, left-hander. Yep, Kozanov coming from the, yeah, he bats left-handed, plays outfield. This is a freshman. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he's got. This will be his ninth appearance. ERA of 6.3. He does have a save. Five saves are recorded by the St. James pitching staff on the year. Kazanov has one of them. You know, this team Wildcats, uh, like you said, he is, Kazanov is, is a uh, freshman. But there's only one senior on the baseball team, and right now he, he's currently walking around in a walking boot with a severely sprained ankle and uh, it's even questionable to make it back before the end of the season. So they are extremely young. Like I said, I think they have three juniors that, that start. And yep. I think three, two, at least three freshmen and an eighth grader. Three freshmen, three, three eighth graders on the roster. Yeah, now, only one of them plays a lot. Yeah. That's uh, Andon Mahler. 
Yeah, and a Mahler at first base. But the others have all played. By the time these grew, these these freshmen and sophomores become juniors and seniors, this this team will be loaded for bear. Yeah, that is going to be a that's yeah. a strong roster coming up. Right. Because you can see some talent out there, but you know they're they're young, they're small, but they can play ball. They'll only get bigger, stronger, and better. <laughs> Cosnow completes his warm-up tosses, and Carter Whipple. Whipple is two for two on the day. He tripled and scored a run in the second inning, and he singled and got left on third base in the third. As we mentioned, those two hits have brought his average up to 297 on the year. This pitch misses low and inside. Ball one. Thurgerson stands on first base, gets a big lead. This pitch misses outside for ball two, two and oh to count. This pitch misses outside, runs the count. Three balls, no strike. And Cosnall is a freshman, but he also bats in the two holes. So see a lot of promise out of this young man. Here's a fastball that's in there for a call, strike one. Looked like Whipple was taking that one all the way. He's had a 3-0 count. He bats in the six hole. This off the end of the bat popped up to the right fielder, and the right fielder oh. backing up stumbles. This is going to get over his head. Thurgerson heading to third, and they're going to send him home. We're going to have a play at home. The throw is high. Going to third base, sliding under the tag is uh, Whipple. He'll get the double, takes third on the throw. One run scores to break the tie. And that for the Panthers, number four, Evan Crapel. And with nobody out, that'll send to the plate Evan Crapel. And that's the second time we've seen uh, the right fielder for St. James struggle with a high fly ball. First pitch is called strike one. At the plate is uh, Evan Crapel. So, Chris, so Crapel moved to shortstop now, if I'm not mistaken? That's correct. Yeah. This pitch misses upstairs. One ball, two strikes. Crapel has uh, walked and scored a run and struck out in the third. So he's 0 for 1 on the day with the walk and the run scored. Here's a curveball that gets away from Mahler. He runs it down, though, before the runner can score. You got a runner on third base with nobody out. You don't want to take too many chances. Mahler didn't pick the ball up right away, but then found it soon enough. Chases one for a swing and a miss and the first out of the top of the fifth inning. That'll bring to the plate a catcher, Lane Rogers. He's one for two on the day. He singled and got left on base at third base in the second inning, and he grounded out to shortstop in the third. There's a curveball that comes in for the call. Strike one, nothing in one. This is going to be popped up to right field. Waited, then comes up, makes the catch. They're going to send him, and he's going to slide in safe. So Rogers will get credited with a sack fly. And, 
and then he gets a run scoring with that wheel clean the bases there will be nobody on base with two outs in the nine hole hitter Grant White who is now pitching in this ball game first pitch misses for a ball we're in the top of the fifth inning 5-3 Panthers have taken the lead here and this, he ducked the bat. And the ball hit the bat. So this is a foul ball. One ball, one strike. When you duck, you got to bring the bat down there with you. <clears throat> and this will hit him. So Grant White gets hit on the leg. He'll trot down to first base. By the way, Whipple's batting average has now jumped to 316. He was 257 coming into the day. Yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, three for three will do for you. He's got, uh, actually, Chris, all he needs is the home run for the cycle. Wow. He's got a single, got a, a double, triple. and a triple. I don't think we have ever seen a cycle not that I can remember but I'm old I forget a lot <laughs> of stuff yeah. okay we move to the top of the batting order and Eli Lodrig he steps in Lodrig is one for three on the day he singled in the first inning to start the game off fly it out to the first baseman and then ground it out to third so one for three. Going down to second base, it's gonna get away from them, but uh, second baseman backs up and makes the play. That's Rome out there. By the way, Berwick only has two home runs on the season, but Whipple does have one of them. Pitch misses, 3-0 the count. Grant White stands on second base. Two away. This fouled back into the net. Strike one, three and one's the count. This pitch is outside. Runner's going to go to third. So the runner does get a steal. I'm sorry. Yeah, the runner gets a steal. Yeah. And Lodry draws the walk. That'll bring to the plate Zach Kitchen. At bat number one, Zach Kitchen. Kitchen is 0 for 2 on the day. He flied out in the first inning, walked in the second, and flied out to the shortstop in the fourth. So we're going to have a substitute and a pinch hitter here. Cole Morris is going to step in the bat for Kitchen. Morris is hitting 280 on the season. Breaking ball comes in for the call, strike one. Nothing in one to count with two outs and runners on the corners. Crapel's going to jog down the second base. They're going to let him have that. So he'll now stand on second with two outs. Cole Morris at the plate. It's a breaking ball that stays outside. Four run league would be a lot more comfortable than two. Always is, especially late. 
This pitch misses. Three balls it. and a strike. Four run lead is twice as comfortable as a two run lead. Yep, that it is. We're in the fifth. Two outs, two on. This is five straight back, so we will have a full count. Three and two with two outs and two on. And two in. This little soft line of the center fielder is going to drop right in front of the center fielder. One run is scored. They're going to send the second one in. And he'll slide safely. So two more runs score. And that's a single for Morris. And that is coming in and doing a job. Okay, Chris, I think we have a different runner now, Morris. I think someone came off the bench to run. I don't know if that's Kitchen that came back in or uh, someone else out there. I think it's Kitchen that came back in. Yes. I think I saw yeah, a one is. on his back. So he uh, is back in the ball game. You can substitute one time for a starter. And uh, so Morris comes in, does his job, gets a two-run single. Going down to second base and sliding in time is Kitchen. So Kitchen will stand on second with two outs. Breaking ball misses inside. Two balls and a strike. This pitch is up and away for a ball. Three balls and a strike. St. James did play yesterday, so that's, yeah. that's got some effect on what pitchers are available. Absolutely it does. And I think they used more than one pitcher yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, at the plate is Gavin Darby. Darby is one for three, grounded to third in the first, struck out in the second, and singled. He uh, singled in the fourth, got caught stealing. Actually stole the base, but he overslid it and got tagged out. So he's one for three on the day. Counts full with two outs and two runners on base, second and third. No, I'm sorry, just one runner on base at second. This pitch is high and inside for ball four. So Darby... Draws the walk, runners on first and second. That'll bring to the plate the cleanup hitter and first baseman, Jason Matthews. And looks like that's gonna do it for Kazanov. Yep, Coach Kiyot's gonna come out. Kazanov will move him off the mound, it looks like. And let's not forget to credit Coach Cody Ortigo. Uh, for the pinch hit move there. Yeah. We got a 220 hitter at the plate and over two on the day to bring the 280 hitter guy with two outs and two runners in scoring position, and he comes through for you. So is that Kaznov still on the mound? Is that yeah. number 30? No yeah, chance. left hander, so they just wanted to talk to him a little bit. They're going to leave him in. And he's going to stay on the mound with two outs and runners on first and second base in the the three-hole hitter. No, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong page. It's a four-hole hitter. Jason Matthews, and he swings at the first pitch, hits a high fly ball to left field. The left fielder LeBlanc gets under it and makes the catch for the third out. So the Panthers in the top of the fifth inning send nine hitters to the plate. Four of them score. 
and they had uh, one, only two hits, but they had one, two, three, four walks, and a hit pitch, hit hit by pitch. Let's take a moment to thank some of our sponsors, Lapco Manufacturing. Feel safe, work smart, look good with Lapco FR, www.lapco.com. Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista. Open late night, delivery through DoorDash. Bayou Bend Fitness Center, 1209 Northwest Boulevard in Franklin. A healthier you begins at Bayou Bend. Conrad Industries, serving St. Mary Parish and the marine industry since 1948. Conrad wishes all of our local teams good luck. And core physical therapy and sports performance here to restore the quality of life you deserve. 611 Brasher Avenue in Morgan City. In the bottom of the fifth inning, the Wildcats will start off with the cleanup hitter, Landon Gravois. He'll be followed by Cam LeBlanc and Andre Mahler. And in Marnell, I'm sorry. Yeah. First baseman ended. His brother is Andre, and he's going to be his battery mate. First pitch misses for ball one. Second pitch inside, ball two. This is called strike one, catches the outside corner. Grant White stays on the mound. Three balls and a strike. Swing and miss, strike two, full count. Three balls, two strikes. Gravois leading off the bottom of the fifth. Nice looking pitch. A oh, beautiful curveball. Breaks right over the plate for a call, strike three. So Gravois goes down looking with for one away. That'll send to the plate Cam LeBlanc, left fielder. His pitch misses, low and away. Ball one. One old pitch is popped up. Center fielder going back, going back. And I guess he, yeah, he caught it. Huh? Yep. <laughs> I thought Very he did, but uh, he didn't really act like it. But anyway, good job out there in left field. He acted like it was routine, but it wasn't. Thurgerson had to run a long way for yep. that ball. So that is Thurgerson out there now, huh? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Kind of looked like his daddy. His daddy used to play left field for the Panthers back in the early 90s. Could he run that well? Well, I always called him one of the most exciting left fielders I've ever seen. Not because he made exciting plays, but he made routine exciting. <laughs> <laughs> he, he would kind of twist to the left and twist back to the right, and he said, he'll never catch that ball. And then he'd catch it. He always would catch it. <laughs> but uh, he, made, uh, he made it more exciting for everybody. Nothing in two to count on Cam LeBlanc. Nope, I'm. Oh, that's Andon Mahler. Where am I? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that was actually Mahler. And nice job by Lane Rogers fielding the pop foul straight up and. Berwick is out of the inning, three up and three down. So we have played three complete innings 
and the Panthers have moved ahead in the fifth by the score of seven to three over the Wildcats. We will go to the sixth inning. And in the sixth inning, the Panthers will start off with Henry Thurgerson. Thurgerson just made a nice play out there in uh, center field. Thurgerson today is one for two. He flied out to right field in the first inning. He doubled in the third inning, and he drew a walk in the fifth inning, and he has scored two runs today. Kaznoff will stay on the mound for the Wildcats. He finished up his, his warm-up tosses. Marler throws down the second. Stepping in the batter's box is Henry Thurgerson. Service, uh, Thurgerson takes first pitch for ball one. This pitch way outside for ball two. Thurgerson is leading off the top of the six. He'll be followed by Carter Whipple and then Evan Krepel. Thurgerson bats in the five hole. And he takes ball four. So Thurgerson will start off the top of the sixth with a walk. That'll bring to the plate Carter Whipple. Whipple's having fun today. He uh, tripled in the second, singled in the third, and doubled in the fifth. Swing and a miss for strike one. I think he looked like he was trying to get that cycle. Yeah, right here. he just needs the home run for the cycle, yep. and he wanted it on that pitch. I think he did. <laughs> Kasnoff goes the first. Thurgerson back in time. Goes the first. Oh, he slid a little early and he didn't get tight to the bag. I think he got caught off and decided his best chance was to make it to second. He might have got away with it if he'd take if he'd run and yeah. taken one more step. I, I agree. Yep. So that'll wipe the bases clean. And Whipple batting with one away now. It's a breaking ball that stays outside. One ball, one strike. This pitch misses inside. How many RBI does Whipple have today? I don't know. Um, he led off the second, so that was none. He might have got one in the third because he got a single and the runner in front of him does score sometime in that inning. Same thing in the fifth, where he had a double following a walk, so he might have had, he could have a couple. Full count with the bases empty. He had nine coming into the day. This pitch, low and inside, ball four. 
So Whipple stays perfect on the day and draws a walk. And bat number 23, Blaze Bella. Blaze Bella is going to come in to bat for Evan Crapel. Last pitch in, pinch hit situation worked well for the Panthers. Yes, it sure did. Bella's hitting 182 on the season. He'll bat for Crapel. Crapel is 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Struck out twice. So they're going to see what Bella can do at the plate. Nice looking curveball there. I said Blaze Bella, but it's actually Leif, Leif Bella. Leif Bella. This pitch misses outside. Evens the count, one ball, one strike, one out with one runner on base. The sun has set to where the whole field is now in shadows. This is off the handle, and it's going to squeeze through between first and second. Run on first is going to go to third. The battle is going to go to second on the throw to third. So Leif Beller gets a single, and Whipple will move to third base. So now you have runners on the corners with one out, and that'll bring to the plate the catcher, Lane Rogers. Second and third. Oh, second and third, that's right, because he went to second base on the, uh, on the throw. And Coach Giot's going to call time, bring his guys out. At the plate will be the catcher, Lane Rogers. Rogers is one for two today. He singled in the second inning, grounded to shortstop in the third, and hit a sacrifice fly and scored a, brought in a run back in the fifth. Bella's average drop jumped to 250 on that hit, by the way. Yeah, don't take a lot of hits to move it up, huh? No, no. When you <laughs> only have a few at-bats. That was just his 12th at-bat of the year. Okay, we got a new pitcher on the mound. It's going to be a right-hander. This is Kay Becknell. Okay, Becknell is moved to the mound. Becknell is a junior. 18.2 innings pitched on the season. This will be his sixth appearance, but his first in relief. At a two and three record in five starts, 5.63 ERA. We're right at that point where, where the sun has set, but it's still kind of light outside to where the lights really haven't started to take over yet. Actually, so, the sun is still up, but I believe it's it's now blocked or now behind the uh, uh, the big permanent batting cage that is uh, behind the ball fields here at St. James. Well, it's, it's not far from being no, set. No. <laughs> I, <laughs> Which, I, we're playing in a shadow. <laughs> from where I am, I can see the sun, but I can't see that building, so I'm assuming that's what's blocking it. Yeah. I don't know. It'd have to be more than that building, Chris, because there's no sunshine. And I'm looking out into the fields, cane fields behind the ballpark. And this is a beautiful facility. Oh yeah, a, the whole the whole school complex is uh, top rate, first class stuff. So Beck now completes his warm up tosses. They have maximized artificial turf here. Oh, yes. Turf infield on the baseball field, on the softball diamond, and on the football field. Here's a breaking ball that misses outside for a ball one. 
Runners on second and third with one away. Lane Rogers at the plate. This fastball catches the inside part of the plate mm. for strike one. One ball, one strike. Fastball misses outside. Ball two, two balls and a strike. Lane Rogers at the plate on deck is Grant White. This in the dirt and outside. Ball three, three balls in a strike. This hit in the gap between left and center field. It's going to get down. Oh, nice catch. Oh, he did catch it? Wow, I thought that got down. <laughs> but the runner does tag up. One run scores. Runner on second moves to third. I thought that ball had gotten down. It's low light, and it's, uh, I couldn't really see it that well. No, he caught it. He caught it. Good catch. I, I, is that Kozanov went back out there? I'm not sure who's out there. Uh, I would have. Yeah, that was Kaznoff with the catch, yeah. I could see, uh, plus I got uh, people helping me out here in the press box. <laughs> the local people, they know them well. And that is cast off, and you can tell it's a left-hander out there. Made a great catch. They did challenge at third base, see if he left early. The safe call stands. This pitch misses outside. Yeah, Coach, Coach Ortego coaching third base and a good job holding up the runner. It would have been easy to send him on that ball because that sure looked like it was going to be hit into the gap. But really no need because, you know, obviously he, he scored on the, on the catch anyway. So Bell is standing now on third base at the plate. It's Grant White. Two outs and a runner on third. One run has scored. 8-3 Panthers lead. There's a breaking ball that misses outside. Ball three, three balls and a strike. This is popped up. Down the third base line, everybody running for it, and it's going to drop in for the base hit and a run will score. This, Chris, was what do you call a C&I hit right there. Yep, dropped into no man's land right, there. Just popped it very high in the, in the air. Third baseman, shortstop, and left fielder all running hard, and it landed right in the middle. But it goes in the book as a single and an RBI. And I would have thought the shortstop might have had a play at that. It had been a long run, but yeah. he probably had the best angle to get to it. Of course, we can't hear him out there, so we don't know if anyone called for it or not. But uh, I think we have a – is that still white or do we have a runner out there? That was close. <laughs> We almost had no runner out there. <laughs> yeah, that was very, very close. That That's Mason White. Mason White, running for Grant White. This off the end of the bat, rolling down the first base line, foul territory. No balls, one strike, two outs with a runner on first base. We were in the top of the sixth. It's a breaking ball that just catches him on the shoulder. That was Eli Lodrig. He gets hit by a pitch, so he'll run down the first base. That'll bring. And that, uh, we'll the St. James fans certainly don't think he was hit. Couldn't hear anything from here. I, nope. 
I, I have to figure that the ump it barely hit him, but the umpire heard it. Yeah, because because the catcher caught the ball. You know, uh, Mahler behind the plate caught the ball. It was a breaking ball. That last pitch was a ball, 1-0. and oh. This is low to make it 2-0. and oh. At the plate is Zach Kitchen. He is the seventh hitter in this top of the sixth inning. His fastball that misses low to run the count. Three balls and no strike. Runners on first and second. We got two outs. Two outs, two on, two in. 3-0 is the count on the two-hole hitter, Zach Kitchen. Taken all the way. It's a call, strike one on the outside corner. Three balls and a strike. This pitch misses low and outside for ball four. So Kitchen will draw the walk and that will load the bases with two outs. And that'll bring to the plate the DH, Gavin Darby. Darby is one for three with a walk. He grounded to third in the first inning, struck out in the second, singled in the fourth, and then walked in the fifth. There's a curve ball called strike one. One ball, one strike. Bases are full. This popped up high to center field. Center fielder, Kaznov gets under it, makes the catch for the third out. So the Panthers in the top of the sixth managed to send eight hitters to the plate. Two of them scored, make the score 9-3. Just two hits. One, two, three walks and a hit batter. So in the middle of the sixth, Panthers move ahead of the Wildcats by the score of nine to three. And scheduled to bat in the bottom of the sixth inning. We'll start off with the seven hole hitter Noah Landry, he'll be followed by the DH, Dakota Benoit, and then the shortstop, Braden Ciano. Brent White still on the bump for Berwick. Did a nice job in relief of Thorgerson. All right, this game is gonna spoil our run of quick ball games as we're about to head into the third hour. Well, I figured it had to be uh, pretty close to that because we had a, a 5.30 game, and like I said, it's, it's uh, at dusk, I guess. Now. Yeah, we're at dusk, I guess we'd call it. <laughs> this foul back straight into the net. Strike one. Landry tonight is uh, one for two. He struck out in the second, and he singled in the third. Swing and a miss for strike two. This pitch misses low for ball one. One ball, two strikes. And it's going to be called strike three. That's a big old outside corner right there, Chris. Yeah. It works for our side, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. From here, no. 
Yep. Yeah. At the plate, Dakota Benoit. Benoit is 0 for 2. He struck out in the second and grounded out to the to the pitcher in the third. Swing and a miss. Strike one. This pitch misses, evens the count at two balls and one strike. This pitch right at the knees on the inside part of the plate for a call strike two, two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got away from the catcher, <coughs> but he didn't attempt to go to first base, so two up, two downs with two strikeouts. That'll bring to the plate the nine-hole hitter, Braden Cena. Does, does the catcher have to make the throw if the runner makes no attempt? No. But you better keep an eye on him until the umpire <laughs> says he's out. Because some may wait a little while. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure when he would be officially out, but. Uh, two balls, no strikes. This pitch misses, lowered inside, run the count 3 and 0. Oh. Nine hole hitter. <laughs> you know he's going to be taking this one all the way. He may be taking the next two. He only has to take one more because that pitch misses low and away for ball four. So C and O will go to first base with two outs, and that'll bring to the plate your pitcher, Cade Becknell. Becknell one for two on the day. He singled in the first and scored a run. Hit a line drive to left field in the second for the out and then walked in the fourth. First pitch is a strike, called strike one. one. If he can get on base, Leon Kasnow will come in to hit. That's a called strike, strike two. <laughs> Nothing in two. The runner on first base in two outs. Runner's going. The pitch is low and away. He'll be safe at second base without a throw. It was a breaking ball that misses for a ball one. The one two pitch. And I guess it didn't. It did. I thought it hit him, but I guess no, it didn't. Guess it was not. off the catcher's mitt. Runner does move to third base. The count is two balls, two strikes with two outs. This is a line drive, but right at the, the uh, second baseman for the third out. So after six complete innings of play, Panthers nine, Wildcats three. Patterson State Bank, free checking, great rates, low down payment, home loan options, and the best in mobile banking. PSB, quality community banking since 1925. GJCurbside.com, your complete online grocery store, including local and regional products. Check our website, website for delivery options. From our curb to yours, GJ Curbside. Ostner St. Mary, quality health care, close to home. 
Lafayette Electric, 1207 Greenwood Street in Morgan City. Proud supporter of high school baseball in the Tri-City area. And Allen's Communications, locally owned TV cable, internet, and telephone service. Call 384-8335. We certainly do appreciate our sponsors. And we appreciate you for joining us here today on KWBJ Live. Don't forget to hit that like button while you're here and subscribe for more live programming, especially local baseball next week. A week from tonight, Central Catholic will visit Hanson. That game is Thursday night, first pitch at 6 o'clock right here on KWBJ Live YouTube. Okay, to start off the top of the seventh inning, seventh and final inning, or final scheduled inning anyway, is cleanup hitter, I'm sorry, yeah, cleanup hitter and first baseman, that's Jason Matthews, and he gets hit by a pitch for the second time tonight. He got hit by a pitch in the first inning, flied out to left in the second, flied out to right in the fourth, and fly it out to left in the fifth. So 0 for 3 and got hit twice. That'll bring to the plate Henry Thurgerson. Thurgerson is 1 for 2 tonight. He flied out to right field in the first inning, doubled in the third, walked in the fifth, and walked in the Sixth. Throw to first, gets away. Ferguson's going to go to second base. Now he's on his way to third. The ball comes into the infield, and Ferguson. Actually, that's Carter Dupuy, pitch but, running. Right, I'm sorry, I yeah. am. Ferguson's at the plate. Dupree's running for Matthews, and he will stand on. Third base with nobody out. First pitch fouled off for strike one. This is a ground ball in the hole between short and third. Run one will score. Thurgerson on his way to first. He singles, picks up an RBI. So Whipple will come to the plate. Aggressive base running right yep. there. Dupuy was going to get second on the passed ball, uh, but with good hustle, he got third, and that's what manufactured an RBI right there because mm -hmm. he doesn't score from second on that hit. Whipple comes in three for three with a single, a double, and a triple, and a walk. So he's got on base every time up, and he has scored three times. Got left at third base on the fourth time. I didn't think he was going to get another opportunity. Yep. 2-0 to count. This pitch is low. That'll run the, the count 3-0. and Nobody out. This pitch misses inside for ball four, so it's a four-pitch walk. That'll put runners on first and second base with no outs. At bat number four, Evan Crapel. Evan Crapel come to the plate. He was pinch hit his last time up. Leif Bella singled, knocked in a few runs. Prior to that, Crapel was 0 for 2. He walked and scored a run in the second. Struck out in the third and struck out in the fifth. Squares to bunt, pulls it back. It's low and away for ball one. One ball, one strike. It's 
where in the bunt again he's going to pull it. No, it's not going to be a ball. It, it is a strike. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss for strike three. So Crapel goes down swinging for the first out in the seventh inning. Runners on first and second. That'll bring to the plate the eight hole hitter and catcher, Lane Rogers. Rogers is one for three. He singled, I'm sorry. No, he's, uh, yeah, he singled in the second, got left on base, grounded to short in the third, had a sacrifice fly, and then flied uh, in, in the fifth and hit, flied out to center field in the sixth. Both runners do advance, now stand on second and third. One away. This foul straight back. One ball, two strikes. One ball, two strikes, one away. Runners stand on second and third base. This is grounded foul down the third baseline. Here's a breaking ball that stays up. Evens the count, two balls, two strikes. This pitch misses outside and runs the count full, three and two. Rogers at the plate, Grant White stands on deck. This pops up, it's gonna be out of play. <laughs> Somebody made a good catch out there. Could you, I guess maybe you could see it? <laughs> yeah, as a youngster playing pitch and catch out here. Mm -hmm. Made the catch. Had his glove on. Okay, count stays full. Three and two. We drew a round of applause from the crowd. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Rogers goes down swinging. That'll bring to the plate. Your pitcher, Grant White. White is one two, actually two for two. He doubled in the second. He walked in the third. He got hit by a pitch and scored in the fifth. And he singled in the sixth. So he is two for two and has scored one run. Two outs, one ball, one strike. Ground ball in the hole between short and third. One run scores. Here comes the second run. No throw coming home and two runs do score. With those two with those two runs, the Panthers will take a twelve to three lead with two outs and a runner on first base. Three runs have scored. Breaking ball, call, strike one. At the pitcher, at the pitcher, at the plate <laughs> is Eli Lodrig. Lodrig is one for three. First pitch misses, or rather, uh, it's got one ball, one strike is the count. Lodrig singled in the first. Flied out to the first baseman in the second, grounded the short in the third, walked in the fifth and scored a run and got hit by a pitch in the sixth, got left on base. This pitch 
breaking ball, but it misses inside, three balls and a strike. Rodrigue draws a walk. Breaking ball. At the knees for a call, strike one, one ball, one strike. Zach Kitchen at the plate. Oh, yeah. This pitch misses. Ball two, two balls and a strike. St. James coach Lou Guillot trying to let Becknell close this thing out. I'm not sure what the schedule is. I believe they play, a, uh, I believe they play next on Saturday. So he, he may be low on pitchers right now. This ground ball hit the short. He's gonna go to first in time for the third out. So Kitchen grounds out for the third out, but not before the Panthers pick up three more runs and take a 12 to three lead as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. In the bottom of the seventh, Wildcats need to score nine to, to stay, keep this game alive. And they will start off with their two-hole hitter in Liam Kaznov, followed by the catcher, Andre Mahler, and Landon Gravois. So they got two, three, and four, so they got the meat of the batting order coming up. But they need to send a lot of people to the plate and score at least nine to keep the game alive. I, I feel like it's it's pretty safe to say Berwick is about to notch its sixth win of the season. Well, and it's a good one. Yeah. You know, they they've played as we said they have really played some some tough competition this year. And you look at this game, uh, the records notwithstanding, these teams are pretty similar in talent and experience. Mm -hmm. Well, in experience, maybe St. James is younger yeah. uh, with all his freshmen and eighth graders, but town, experience level is about even, and you wanted to see how Berwick would react to it, and you, you, you got to give him nothing but positive marks. Cosnow steps in the batter's box, takes the first pitch, fastball on the inside corner for a call strike one. Grant White trying to close this thing out. This off the end of the bat goes the opposite field. Line drives to left field between short and third. And Kaznov starts it off with the single. And, it for the Wildcats, number six, Andre and that's his uh, first hit of the night. That'll make him one for three because he's got a sacrifice in there. That is a freshman who made that fantastic catch out in center field last inning. He sure did. Comes back, gets a nice base hit here in the bottom of the seventh. This is Andre Mahler. Mahler is uh, one for two tonight. He also drew a walk, scored a run. Has a double. This one hit was a double back in the first inning. There's a breaking ball of beauty. Comes in for a call, strike two. Nothing in two. This is a soft liner, but it's right at the second baseman. And he tried to pick off the runner at first. I think that ball might have hit the the runner or he jammed his his hand or elbow diving back at the bag. But uh, he comes up uh, a little limp. Trainers come out to check on him. He waves him off, says, no, man, I'm good. Next bat, number eight, yep, 
holding his arm. Yeah. Kind of jammed his arm into the base when he dove back. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Uh, I, I, I know um, Matthews didn't feel that ball, so I don't know if he uh, knocked it down or if uh, it hit the, the base runner. I, I think it got by and bounced off the the netting for the for the uh, the dugout. Yeah, well, it came back onto the field. But what it did before it hit that netting is the question. <laughs> we got a fastball here that misses for ball one. One ball, one strike. At the plate is Landon Gravois. He is 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. There's a breaking ball that catches the outside corner for a call strike two. One ball, two strikes. White's using a lot of curve balls, but he's keeping them around the plate. This popped up high to left field. Left fielder drifts and makes the catch for the second out. Kitchen. It's a kitchen out in left field. Kitchen's in left. Yeah. At the plate is Cam LeBlanc, the left fielder. LeBlanc is 0 for 2 with a walk. He did score a run. He reached base in a, on an error and scored in the third. First pitch is a strike. Nothing in one. Two outs. Run runner on first. This pitch is low for a ball, one ball, one strike. Aaron, remember all those mosquitoes that jumped us when the sun went down and cut off the other night? Yeah, yes, they I did. They got them here, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so far, so good here in the press box. I know you're just outside. It's a breaking ball for a call. Strike two, one ball, two strikes. Cam LeBlanc at the plate. Swing and a miss for strike three. Ball game. And that will wrap it up as White comes in in relief of Thurgerson and does a pretty good job. Held the, um, the Wildcats scoreless. All round good game for the Panthers. Sure they was. Hit the Chris. ball very well, facing a, a a pretty good pitcher we've seen already one time this year in Gravois. And it took a little while to get to him. They got a couple of runs in the early innings. But once they finally got him out of the game in the fifth, uh, they jumped all over the bullpen. Uh, solid defense. I, I, don't, I don't think there were any errors on, on behalf of Berwick. The pitching went well. Thorgerson gave him a good start, gave him some. Uh, some quality pitches for a while. White did a nice job in relief. What a night for Carter Whipple. Single, double, triple, a couple of walks. Heck of an outing. They improved to 6-14 and 14 on the year. District opening win for the Panthers. St. James falls to 9-11, and 0-1 oh and in district. All right. Beautiful night tonight. Beautiful day today. And uh, good, clean uh, baseball game here today. Uh, like I said, we, we expected a good ball game. We had two evenly matched teams, and they both uh, came to play. Berwick, of course, will walk away with the victory, 12-2-3. And uh, feeling good about themselves. Like I said, they've been playing a lot better baseball in the last couple of three weeks. Haven't won a lot of ball games, but they're getting tough, hanging in there, and hopefully laying a good, solid foundation to make them strong next year. One more quick shout out to our sponsors, Lapco Manufacturing, Taco Bell, Bayou Bend Fitness Center, Conrad Industries, Core Physical Therapy and Sports Performance, Patterson State Bank, GJCurbside.com, Oshner St. Mary, Lafayette Electric, and Allen's Communications. We'll take the, the weekend, the Easter weekend with you and long break up to the next game next Thursday night, six o'clock first pitch from Hanson as the Tigers host Central Catholic. Okay, so that'll wrap us up here in Vachery, Louisiana, on the campus of St. James High School. 
where the Berwick High Panthers have just defeated the St. James Wildcats by a final score of 12 to 3. It's been a great ball game. My name is Aaron Ortigo here with Chris Hunter. We enjoyed bringing it to you. We hope you enjoyed our baseball game. Join us next Thursday for another outstanding high school baseball. Good night, everybody. Yep. Good night.